Hey. Hey. Do you hear any background voice? Oh, sorry, your audio is really quiet. Can you hear me or you can't hear me at all? Um, it's quiet, but it's coming through. I've I turned my volume up a bit. Can you hear me now? That's a little better. Okay. I was asking, do you hear any background uh, uh, voice? No. Okay. Hello. Hello. I do have audio. And we can hear you as well. Do we have anything in the notes here? March 8th, two issue links, sign metadata, targeting annotations, and dynamic mutations based off Rego. I'm guessing Rita added the issue links. Uh, I have not, I am not sure. Let me pee.
Oops, I was on mute. Uh, looks like Rita is going to be a little late. We can get started. Oh, okay. Well, I I feel like did, did she have the first two links? If so we should like. Uh, I don't know. I just asked. Um, but we we can start from the third one. Okay. Uh, the third one wasn't very long. Uh, just from the the Celotep work, there's a code freeze on Tuesday for Kubernetes stuff. So just FYI, I'm kind of in more of a push to get that stuff out the door. So we don't need to wait another, what is it, quarter or something like that. Uh, in particular, custom match conditions uh, we'll, we'll need in order to do like matching against kind. Best all. <laughs> no, not much to discuss, just an FYI. Uh, if, for whoever's typing, if they could put oh, the I, name. I, the I, 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 I was sorry. I'm, oh, no worries. Multiple things. <laughs> uh, looks like she added the first one, but not the second one. I don't know hmm. if somebody on the call added the second one. But um, we can go to the assigned one. Um, if nobody. The as assigned image question you're saying? Yeah, or... I have a, I did a question, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was looking at the assigned image policy that we just added. Let me put the link. One second. Where is it? Assigned image. Oops. It's on the VNX docs. Um, assign image. I can't play. Uh, yeah. So I was looking at it. it looks like since we uh, removed the. Um, the value tests and adding the link into the doc. Um, so th this one will be a little too broad, I think. So this is, I think the intention is to replace everything. So I, I was thinking um, the the Kate's GCR IO could be like the, the, the freeze for the uh, repository could be a good use case for this one. So instead of using Kate's.gcr.io, we could mutate to registry.case.io. Um, but sounds like we can't do it because then it will just basically mutate everything. Yeah, uh, well, it, it would mutate everything on the pod. I think this is a good use case for having some kind of a filter, uh, particularly for keyed lists. Uh, we, we do want to be a little careful, right? Because having value tests is how you can get the infinite recursion stuff. but for a keyed list because we don't allow you to alter the key value, right? Uh, filtering off of container name, for instance. So not the image, but the, the container name. Right. But then that requires us to know the container name. I mean, I, Correct. At, at, I mean at that point, you can just change it to uh, the, the registry uh, image because they, you, you already know. Uh, Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so for like sidecar injection, right? This can be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, for, and and for Kate's stuff, like changing all of the containers might not be so bad, except for the the like sidecar use case, right? Like as long as you know which deployments are in scope for that, right? Because I do think multi-container is. Uh, barring sidecar injection, a bit more rare. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking value tests could be handy there. I mean, obviously we, we talked about the issues there, uh, but it, we could we could check. Hey, does this contain case that gcr.io? And then, but yeah, well, like that, it could be like edge cases. So because after a certain date, new images are not going to be in the repo. Uh, so then, if you do mutate it and then they're not found, then that's going to be an issue, obviously. If you do mutate it and they're not found, that's so good. say uh, customized, right? Customized 4.0, let's say that got published tomorrow and they it never got um, published to the old registry. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you do mutate it and then customized 4.0 is not found there, then obviously that's going to be uh, image not found there. 
I don't know if that made sense. Um, uh, it, it does. Like you're saying, you're you're coercing things to look at the old registry, essentially. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely not a foolproof way of doing stuff. Uh, so, but I was just wondering I, because I was kind of thinking about adding a policy for that too. But it, it's just one: we don't have value tests, so we will need to know the the container name specifically, or do it for everything, which is obviously it's not going to work out. Um, or, or and it, it wouldn't work out in a level because uh, of certain images will never be in the old registry. Right, but also why would you mutate stuff to look at the old registry? Uh, no, no, to, to, from old to new one. So from thgcr.io to the registry case.io. And you're saying certain stuff will never be... Right, because it's frozen in the old one. So in an, everything new will be published in the new one. Right, and is stuff that's old published in the new one as well? Like, did they right? It's, it's a one-one match um, as long as it's before a certain date. So I, I I'm confused what the the failure state would be if you're rewriting old to new. Like, it seems like that would should always work, but not for a an image published in the future after the freeze date. But it's that will be published to new, and you're rewriting old to new. Oh yeah, and, that would oh, yeah, that would obviously require a um, a value test of some sort, right? Checking like case.gcr.io is there? Uh, not not necessarily. Like uh, it, so it does mean obviously. Like the the trick here is you only want to rewrite Kate's images, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if it's a Kate's image, it sounds like if it's pointing at the new repository, that's always the correct, a correct thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so the trick is more like, is this a Kate's image versus is this a Kate's image pointing to a specific Kate's repository? And that one might be more amenable to testing off of name or only mapping to certain pods. Right. And if it's only mapping to certain pods, you could start using like metadata selectors. Uh, if it's like a hybrid container set because you're using sidecar injection or it's a multi-container pod or what have you. Uh, that's, that's I think, the edge case that's... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Covered. Yeah. I think the, the limitation is you must know the name of the, the container. Yep. Yeah. And... Well, I mean, the, the limitation right now is there's no way to subset containers, uh, any kind of key list with mutation. Uh, it's, it's sort of a star or list specific container names, right? Mm -hmm. So you could create like, uh, yeah, I, I guess you could create a mutator for every known container name, and that might be tractable. Like, I, I honestly <laughs> don't know. How how many Kate's containers there are in a, a standard cluster? So is it like ten mutators, one or a million? Um, but assuming that you needed some sort of not mechanism, right? Like mutate all containers except for Istio sidecar, right? Or mutate all containers whose name starts with this specific prefix or something like that, that we can't do currently. Yeah, yeah I think that this, the injection makes sense in, because you know, hey, if you know that, hey, this, this, this thing is gonna inject this and you don't have control over the, what it injects, then it, that makes sense because you already know the name of it. But yeah, anything else on this, you know the name of it and then it's, 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 it will be easier to just migrate it manually then to rely on a mutator. Yeah, yeah. I and in general, just using mutators as a migration tool, I'm not sure of. Uh, another thing that we want to be cautious of right now. Hi, Rita. We're we're on the assign image question. We skipped the first two topics because uh, you, I think you had put one of them in, and we'll come back to them. Uh, but um, one thing we we want to be cautious of, at least right now, is Kate's is looking also at like internal mutation something like a, a, a internal Re like redirect yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think they're talking about that now yeah yeah so one thing that we may want to do is just sort of wait and see what they come up with 
Right. And this wasn't like, hey, this, this is what we should do, but I was just looking at it and then, hey, this could be a good use case because of the, the migration thing, right? Uh, and I thought like, uh, we could do this, but then I obviously thought about the value tests are not there. So uh, it would be harder to do, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and if if there's embedded mutation, that's like, honestly, you should just use embedded mutation if, if, uh, if you can uh, and it exists and it works, right? Um, so we should see, and I, I honestly have no idea what that's going to look like, if it will pan out, that, that kind of stuff. Um, so, so there's risk in us doing something that then we can't reconcile with what they've done, though maybe that's already the case, we don't know. Yeah, um, yeah so, so that's where, and, and mutation seems niche enough that I don't know how hurt we get by, by waiting. Hey, um, what's the question? I just see a sign image question. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was just typing it on the fly. Uh, so it, this was like just the background context for Rita. Uh, yeah. I was asking, hey, can we use this for the kxdgcr.io to um, register.kx.io migration? Because when we were just talking, because we don't have value tests anymore, um, it, we would need to, and then Max was saying we would need to know the uh, the name of the container. And then this could be a good use case for like an injector sort of situation where we do know the container name, but we don't have uh, capability to, to change the image. Um, but otherwise, we, we we would need to know the, the name of the container. Or or the names of containers, like assuming we would develop like a not filter, the names of containers we don't want to mutate could also be a thing. Uh, don't know if that applies in this case, because if you're running only vanilla Kubernetes stuff, I'm not sure what <laughs> workloads you're running. Yeah, I but I, I think <laughs> that gang, that they'll be very, I mean, this, we could be very error prone, right? Like, because if you do miss one thing, then like everything gets mutated. Um, but then the doc you linked, the location for the name of the container is a wild card, right? Yeah, so this will basically change everything. Right, and you're saying we need some way to not do it on all. Is that it? Yeah, I mean, unless all your <laughs> images are coming from case.gcr.io, this is not going to be a good fit. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, you could mutate on all, or you can mutate on yeah. a specific string match and nothing in between. The, there's there's no other test against the, the okay. key. I'm there. all caught up now, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, with, with the mutator stuff, for me, the, the hosted mutation <laughs> that, uh, more so than than uh, validation, even like I know I because validation is audit, and I know we were like originally trying to like play around with like regular mutation cycles that converge pre-existing objects. In that case, you definitely would want <laughs> convergent like syntax, right? Uh, I don't know if that's still a going concern for us. I. I haven't heard many people ask for it, uh, but in the absence of that, right, it, it's, it becomes a pure webhook thing. Uh, and embedded is always gonna do that better. Uh, you could maybe start talking about, because another thing we have going for us is external data. Right, and I don't know if embedded would do external data. Uh, but right, it, it seems unlikely. And and again, uh, the syntax that we have right now helps us there, because that the way we've written the mutation system is what allows us to 
have everything settle out and then make our external data requests in parallel versus doing them in serial, right? And latency for mutation is otherwise like pretty bad, right? Because it's additive. Do we support external data for a signed image? Um... I don't think currently. I could mm -hmm. see we don't currently. Yeah. I was going to ask, we want to do that. I mean, I guess, but then uh, would that be an issue with the convergence? Uh, let's see. So, in some ways, if it is, the ship has already sailed. Like, uh, so external data currently we say must be idempotent, right? Like, this always maps. Okay. Okay. So, uh, the difference between like a value test and what external data would do is I think the value test you are proposing is compatible with what you're trying to do, but not all would be, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to delay that framework. But uh, right now, external data, say you had like kates.io and you wanted to transform it to new.kates.io. I don't know what the actual host name is, but just bear with me. Uh, and, and then the, the other side of that, the idempotency is if you see new.kates.io, return new.kates.io, right? Uh, what a value test would do, though, is you could have two separate mutators, right, where you say, if you see kates.io, make it new.kates.io. Then another one says, if it's new.kates.io, make it some third thing. And then it, you, you have a final mutator that says, if it's that third thing, make it kates.io. And you wind up with an infinite cycle that way, right? So the fact that uh, external data points to a global system, right, that must always obey this specific translation rule no matter what constraint template it shows up in, is I think what makes it convergent. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, so I think if we want to have that in the future, then we could use external data. Yeah, I mean, that, that's also interesting, an interesting idea for string translation, right? Like, I. There's no reason it, like that external data model always has to run out to a webhook or whatever. Uh, so if, if we wanted to expand the language to make it have something like that value test, excuse me, then maybe that's something we could draw inspiration from. Uh, it would be pretty limited use. I would think, right? Like you, you would need to have a use case that is seriously change this string into that, and that's it, right? Or, or things that have a similar shape to that. I don't know how common that is. It's also not obvious to me that it's uncommon. Yeah, obviously, I, I've not gotten any questions or requests for this fund, just, just thinking out loud, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I think our moat for mutation might be external data if we're talking about how, how do we provide value in an embedded, otherwise embedded world. Um, that was it for my questions. Do we want to uh, go back to one? This is the have it select against annotations. Yeah, uh, I was hoping the person who opened the issue could join and and they did ask when the meeting was, but I don't think they can make it. Well, maybe they are more free next week at the different time. He said in a comment, Rita, that he couldn't make it today. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. 
Um, I mean, I, I guess, do we want to talk about it? I, I feel like we're kind of like going back and forth. Um, so maybe it's just a matter of like making a decision whether or not we want to support it. And if so, what does that look like? Um, and then who, whoever has time can work on it. Yeah, and my ambivalence here is kind of strong, right? Like there's there's no fundamental reason why it shouldn't be done. There is a bit of an opportunity cost there in that annotations are structured objects, right? Like oftentimes people shove JSON into an annotation. Case last applied configuration is a prime example there. Um, so if we ever wanted to have a more intelligent uh, mutation of annotations, right, that's more structurally aware, this would probably preclude that. Uh, and, and also, if you have these highly structured annotations, which this particular user does not, uh, selectors don't necessarily work in that case, right? Because you can have strings that are differently shaped, but mean the same thing, right? Like just you've changed the order that keys in an object are in the serialized JSON. It's still the same object, but as a flat string match wouldn't tell you that. Um, so like how niche is the ability to select like, like just the need to have a straight string match against an annotation. Uh, the the fact that it goes against uh, the sort of like Kate's conception of object identity, right? Like they explicitly carve out labels, help identify an object, annotations do not. They're like arbitrarily shaped metadata. Um, it makes me a little cautious, like going against the stated intent of a thing, because then you never know whether what you're what you're doing is just an accident that it happened to work, but then the next new thing that comes along breaks your thing entirely. Uh, I don't think that's a huge risk uh, for this particular thing, but you know, it's I'm I'm always aware of going beyond the interface. Um, the, the other thing that's in here is this is like a very mutation specific need, right? If this were validation, you could write some rego code and be done, right? Um, and, and yet this would also impact validation. And, and frankly, I, I view validation as the more common use case. So, um, I don't think it would be bad to have it in validation, but tail wagging the dog kind of thing. Oh, and when you say you don't think it's bad to have it in validation, do you mean just like a like a policy in library or because there's, there's well, nothing new here, right? Well, it would he the the suggestion would be to add a new match criteria, right? Like, in addition to label selector, have annotation selector. At least that's how I read it. Maybe, uh, I, and I'm pretty sure I read it right. Um, and, and so that would be a new match criteria for mutators, also for constraints. Oh, OK. Yeah, I was, I thought it was, this was just for mutation. Um, but I can see it could be for. Like we could make it just for mutation. That would make the code a little more complicated because we currently we've consolidated all our matcher code to be the same code. Um makes so sense. we would sorry, go ahead. I said makes sense. Okay. Uh yeah, so we we could make them diverge again, but that would take some effort. Uh then there's the question of well, now it's harder to explain. Well, you could use these selectors for mutation and this separate set of selectors for validation. So there's there's just more to document, more user surprise at that point. So I would 
tend to want to include him in both unless unless we really knew like to go back to the embedded mutation thing if we knew that it's going to like fundamentally change how things work to the point where I don't know, we were completely forking out mutation into its own thing or completely rewriting the syntax or, or something like that, uh, where it became like obviously fine that you would have this separate behavior. Uh, I think I'm okay with like a string match for both mutation and validation. Yeah, it's not pure. <laughs> it's 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 not the contract, but it's probably fine. I think it's good enough for now. Otherwise, we just keep dancing around it. Right. Well, I mean, in some ways, the dancing around it plays in our favor at this point because the we have this mutation cap that we don't know the shape of. Right. If we do know the shape of it, we have more data, we can maybe make better decisions. Um, so that would be the case for just not making any kind of decision. Uh, the case for not doing the string matching, aside from if we just didn't want to do it on principle, which I don't think anyone here is like grossed out to the point that, uh, you know, that, that we wouldn't do that. Um, the the case for doing some for not doing it otherwise would be uh, if we wanted to have other types of mutators that are targeting annotations specifically because annotations are functionally significant right and so if you had like a JSON mutator that could mutate annotations having annotations in the match criteria would make it impossible. You you wouldn't want that. Because then you could also you could mutate something that's used for selection. You mentioned mutation is being discussed in KK. Um, yeah. what's the timeline on that? If you no clue. <laughs> there's a, there's there's someone working on a cap. Uh, I don't know. I could I could ask like what the momentum of that is. Um, I mean, I I, appre I appreciate you thinking about alignment here. Um, I mean, one is we could introduce this as like a, I guess like, what is the API version on this? <laughs> could, could we make? I mean, it's a beta. <laughs> Right. So uh, right now, if uh, because uh, the match criteria go everywhere, it would affect constraints, mutators, blah, blah, blah. Forget what we have constraints on. Did we add V1 constraints or did we like oversight? No, the constraints are in beta. Oh. Uh, mutators are in uh, V1, though. Interesting. Um, yeah, and so I don't know how you like. are V1, yeah. How is constrained beta? And that's weird. OK. Oversight. Like, we could make them V1 if we wanted. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, yeah, if there's some way, like, we could make it not match criteria, we could put it in a separate field as well. Um, that that might be a quick and dirty way of adding it to mutation, but not to validation. With the understanding that it could be deprecated later when we have more clarity on how to do this. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, though, too. Like, if we're doing this for a user request and we're sort of like, I don't know, but we might want to, like, deprecate it, like, because it precludes this other thing. But then the user's relying on the function. 
Like, is it nicer just to like not do a thing until we know, like, yeah, we're we we think you could build off this, and it, it won't. depends on how long the way is, right? Like you're saying, when you're saying wait, you mean for the K slash K version of this, yeah. uh, under the assumption that, well, because there's there's two things here, right? Like the K slash K thing, if that completely gets rid of mutation as a going concern, uh, then that's that's certainly one thing, right? Like then we could do whatever, right? mm -hmm. uh, as, as long as it meets whatever functional restrictions we have. And we don't need to think a year or two ahead. Well, we don't need to think more than like a year and a half ahead, I would say. Um, if we still think we want to have mutation, like there's some sort of value we can eke out for like external data or something like that. Uh, and so we want to try to keep it as a going concern and not just let K slash K own that syntax then uh, then, then we want to be sure that we're laying a foundation for the thing we might want to build. I mean, I guess I, I don't want like a, another feature in another project to necessarily drive the progress of this project. Um, I think that's a bad precedent. Sure. Okay. So if then we assume it's a going concern, right? And then then we realize that the cost of adding this feature is the opportunity cost of not being able to mutate annotations right. uh, later, which right. you know I am not aware of anyone asking for that. Um, so maybe that's fine. But it, it is the cost, unless we're like willing to remove the feature we've written, which at that point, I would rather not have someone rely on us do a thing. I think I'm okay with adding like a alpha feature for now. And then with the understanding that if we change it later, it could mean migration for people. Well, it, the migration would be, they just wouldn't be able to use mutation unless we like stop caring about convergence, which maybe that's a thing like that that i think is the most interesting thing k slash k can do uh is is actually have a stance on that because it's in process uh having an official kubernetes response to that issue and and knowing what hosted providers are comfortable with in terms of <laughs> that feedback loop, right? Whether whether it then just like gets disabled, right, or or not, I think would be very telling in terms of the value of convergence. What's the decision here? <laughs> I I can only lay the the the, the trade off. I, I think there's a trade off between doing this and and more fine grain mutation of annotations. Uh, and I would I the only thing I'm saying is I think it actually is a trade off, right? Like I don't think we can responsibly say this functionality won't go away uh, without also saying that uh, we will never do mutation of annotations. I don't have a strong opinion as to which outcome is better because honestly, I'm not in love with either use case. Uh, but I, 
that is the trade-off and having some signal on people's values. That's the only thing I'm saying. Like, does anyone care if, if we can't mutate annotations in a more complex way? Because that might also just not be possible to do, right? Like, if it's JSON, maybe. Like, I could imagine the type system, but is it something that anyone would ever want to do? I thought they're only asking for simple string match. Right. What I'm saying, though, is simple string match and the ability to mutate annotations are mutually exclusive features, right? We get one. And I don't think doing one and calling it alpha is like it's technically OK. But honestly, I would tell users not to use that feature for anything they cared about um, because it has a target on its back otherwise, right? If, if we're going to remove it, because it's not going to be like the shape of it would change. It would be that feature is gone, right? So there'd be no migration path. OK. Uh, do you mind summarizing this in the issue? I mean, I, I think it's, these are valid points. Um, it might already be mentioned in the issue. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't know if it explicitly calls out like Like if we were to turn it on for string match, that it might be something that we remove later. I don't think that's called out. Yeah, it's sort of implicitly called out in, I think, uh, this comment, but it's not. Um, I didn't. I didn't place it as starkly as I did here. Like the one risk here would be if mutators gain the ability to mutate annotations beyond assigning them a constant value if undefined. For instance, if mutators could mutate JSON inside of an annotation, this could lead to infinite recursion. So, yeah. It's implicit is yo. These features are trade off, but yeah, I could I could say. I mean, it sounds like this is another convergence issue, right? Could we do this with the external data? Like, if somebody really, really wanted to do this? I think the part that's not clear is like you're in the comment, you said, I'm okay with this as long as it's clear it will never be more than a strict string match. Yeah, like I. So that yeah. makes it sound like string match is okay. Well, it I I think it, it is okay if you're okay with not mutating annotations, like structured annotations. It's a trade off, and as I said, I have no strong opinion as to which use case is more valuable because, frankly, both use cases scare me a little bit <laughs> in terms of like, eh, should you really be using mutation for that? Um, so yeah, whichever one wins, I'm fine with it. It's it's just a trade-off.
I mean, it sounds like the risk here is that annotations can be like complex, not just strict string match. Right. Well, so annotations are have structures, right? And those structures can mean things, right? Like you can have annotations that, for instance, control whether what kind of load balancer gets assigned. I believe on on a, a networking primitive, right? There's there's other things like that where it's annotations are meant to be. Uh, schema-less uh, data that third-party controllers can shove whatever scratch data they need onto an annotation, right? And so if you wanted to use mutators to change the content of an annotation, to change the behavior, an example of this would be say you wanted to change gatekeepers like sync annotation on a constraint template, right? Which would change our validating code or how our validating logic works. Uh, that, that could be a use case, right? Um, the other option would be to use mutations as, or sorry, annotations as a identifier, right? In which case, I think string match is probably the only sustainable thing because you can't do object matching. That's that's just going to be brittle. Uh, and in at that point, you've forgotten this other use case. Yeah, and then coming back to the like external data or something like external data that would always return something idempotent, is could that be possible? Like, is that a good use case? Uh, for annotations? I mean, for anything that's basically, that has this convergence issue. So I'm just trying to think about like, hey, I mean, obviously these are use cases with like, like, pat, like yeah, sorry, value tests and whatnot. So could we make a system that is, that can address that, but while keeping convergence? So I have, identifence is a pretty blunt hammer, right? Like, so if you think about the entire mutation system is, is designed to mutate structured data in a convergent manner, right? Um, and, and that allows you to do things like, OK, well, I'll have one mutator at a pod, and then have a second mutator, or sorry, one mutator at a sidecar, and a second mutator change the image pull policy or whatever. Um, if you require idempotence, Right. What basically you're saying is, I have a containers field, but which is a list of objects, right? And I will mutate that containers list to, for a given input state, it will look like this output state. And if I put that output state back into the system, I will get back the same answer. Right, so you basically cannot have a do this, then do that, right? Your entire, everything is one and done. Mm -hmm. So you, you can do some stuff with that maybe, right? Like um, simple use case would be if you had just an external data thing that spewed out a constant value, right? Always, no matter what the input is, uh, that that would be compatible. But then you would need to be okay with only <laughs> spewing out a constant value for everything everywhere, right? Which is pretty limiting. Uh, you could you could try to then have it be somewhat sensitive to the input value, uh, but then you run into testing for equivalence on a structured object. Right, like, is this a floating point number? Are these two floating point numbers identical? That kind of stuff, uh, and and those tests get hairy. So, uh, selecting against the input might be unreliable. 
and and then the idempotence is also a higher bar, right? Because you would need to make sure your sets of outputs mapped back to each other, right? And there's no like branching where you can, for a given input, have a like every basically it's like for every input it would need to point to an output object and every output object when used as an input needs to point to itself right and that that kind of structure for complex objects might be hard to set up yeah i mean so like the one user is asking for uh like safe to evict annotation to change it to do not evict right so that's there's that's like a simple input and output right yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and and if you had, well, that's that's the other thing, right? Is that the the reason we can get away with modifying labels is we actually don't modify labels; we only add if missing. Right. Uh, and so, if we were to select against annotations, then we could only add if missing. For the same reasons, right? So, so the changing of an annotation that would be precluded. This is actually a fair point. That that would also break the idempotence thing, I think. Um, yeah, in this case, I think they're asking for changing it, not adding it. Yeah. So, so those use cases might be antagonistic as well. Maybe there's a way to to not have them be, but at first brush, they seem exclusive. Um, I didn't put the next one. I don't know who put that one. I'm, I'm guessing it's the same person because they, they're mm -hmm. like examples of a, the, yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But it's along the same line, I think. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense, yeah. But I still feel like what 20A7 is asking for is a little bit less daunting, like complex compared to other ones. So I'm wondering if like, if we had enough like guardrails, would it would it be okay to enable it without getting into the convergence issue? But it sounds like that's not possible. Well, it, I think in isolation, it's fine. Like we could write it today and it's fine. Uh, but now there's two use cases we could think of, one from my own brain, one from a user request, right? Where we wouldn't be able to have both of those or it's not obvious we'd be able to have both of those and still be conversion. So it, it becomes a, you know, which which is more important uh, and, and which one, uh, you know, like it, it, it'd be nice if we could do all of them. I don't know if we can, frankly. Yeah, looks like the original issue is asking if an annotation with something exists, add this. And then the other user is asking modifying an existing annotation to something else. I mean, I yeah. guess they, they could also keep the same annotation too. I, mean, I don't know if that's an issue or not, but. Yeah, I think they're both keeping the original, which would help with the divergence issue, right? Well, no, one is modifying the value of the annotation, right? They're they're changing, what was it, image, uh, disruption budget or something like that? The do not evict? Yeah, yeah, eviction policy. Yeah, I, I, I think that they, they are saying swap it, but they could probably keep it. I don't know if that's, a, that's a, like a, not their use case. So they could be like, hey, keep, if, if you see safe to evict, also add do not evict. 
Wait, you can have both annotations? Like, don't they I have mean, the same I, I don't know. They are, one of them is a plus auto scaler, one of them is Carpenter. Uh, yeah, they're, so I, they're different keys. Okay. Right. They're different keys. So they don't want to, they don't different. know they want to replace or I they want to I don't think they're changing the original one. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't need to change the value, then you're you're getting into label territory, right? Where that that's fine. Yeah, they, they said swap here, but I I don't know if that's I don't think that's the same. Yeah. So it would be append. We could pick that yeah, as an append. I think it's append. Yeah. Yeah. So can we just go back and say, hey, if it, this is not changing the original and it's just append, does that meet your requirement? If so, then the convergence issue is not there, right? It, this is true. Um, we we still have the trade off, right? Like if we ever wanted to modify an annotation, that's that that opportunity is now flown. I'm not saying we have to care about that, but I'm sensing like us wanting to satisfy immediate user requests um, at potential syntactic cost. And that's like fine if we're okay with paying the syntactic cost, but I really want to be clear that we are paying a cost and we're okay with paying that cost, right? Because it's really easy to say yes and paint yourself into a corner. Um, so we should say yes, because we have good faith that we're not. Well, for the record, I want to see more people asking for it. I just want to clarify with people, here's what we think is okay. Like, well, here's one that has lower risks maybe. And, and here's what it means if we do add it. And then if you really, really want this, give us a thumb up. Like, I, I want to see that. I think what has happened so far is like, we've been saying like, oh, there's this convergence issue. So we kind of just like say no to everything. And, and I don't know, like, and I feel like we're losing users that way. If there's like actually doable lo low hanging fruits maybe. Yeah. Maybe, I, and, th and this is where like, I'm also more okay with the K slash K thing, taking more of an influence on the roadmap because knowing that there's some large, in some ways, very much functionally improved, you no know, latency feature coming down the pipe. Uh, you know, if we spend, let's say half a year writing a really nice extension to the functionality of mutation, or we decide, ah, oh, let's just forget about convergence and, and, and then we can have all these features and let's take the time to implement them. And that goes away anyway, then uh, we probably could have made a better investment. And, and your mention of like mutation being a topic of, you know, in KK that people may want to drive, like, can we link to it that way? people know this is beyond just this project uh, and that, I mean, I know people know, but maybe not as obvious. Um, yeah. yeah, I've seen a draft doc. I don't know how widely it has been shared. I also kind of have been pushing them to deal with this convergence problem, like have a stance on it uh, in that doc. Uh, it's been like a month since I've seen a copy. So yeah, I could, if it's public, I'm, I'm happy to, Make it sure. more public. Let me let me ask the author. Sure, I I totally understand where you're coming from and your hesitation. I I just want to, even if we say no, I want to give like a good no answer to why the no. I, I don't right. want to keep saying no to users. I I feel like we're losing a lot of users that way. So. And I know other projects just say yes to everything, but still, like, um, it, it's a balance, right? Yeah, yeah. And as I said, like, I I feel like I've been arguing very vociferously. I'm, my argument isn't for no, right? My I I just uh, want want y'all to hear the trade offs and like 
vote on the relative importance of the trade-offs, not um, try to like skirt around the fact that there is a trade-off, you know? And I personally don't care what the outcome is, just, just that people are okay with the results. <laughs> Okay, well, thanks for uh, the discussion. Um, and let's up, if you don't mind updating the issue a bit with, you know, what's been happening in KK and uh, your concern with like future mutators that could actually impact this, uh, I think is uh, not there yet in the comments. So, yeah, I wouldn't expect this particular commenter to care <laughs> that much about those, but maybe. But other people who come back yeah. later, they read it, they might care, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get um, some info on like how linkable the doc is. And then once I have that, I'll post. Thank you. See everyone.